Uh, it sure can be lonely at night. I know what we need. A good old-fashioned sing-along. <laughs> You jerk! What'd you do that for? Oh, I'm sorry. I heard this horrible sound. I thought you were a dying giraffe. What's that supposed to mean? Anyway, you here for the sing-along? Oh, I... Uh, no. As a druid, I have to say no to noise pollution. Well, okay. Whatever that means. But since you're here, what do you want to do? I mean, we could go swimming or fishing. After all, there's only an entire ocean in this area now. I'm sure we can try fishing up one of them whale sharks if we wanted. Well... See? Isn't this fun? What the... What the hell? Oh dear. I thought I rid myself of you a long time ago. Oh come on, it's just a movie! And look, it even has the Tool Man in it! I was there when the strength of Tool Man failed. Well, maybe it will be so bad it's good? Oh, you poor naive hunter. Come on, let me enlighten you with my druid wisdom. Feeling like a big dog. Now, you may be familiar with the 1959 original or the 1994 remake, both of which were produced by Disney and told the rather lighthearted tale of a boy who turns into a sheepdog after finding a magical ring. So, in an attempt to update one of their classics and cash in on a whole new generation that, I guess, doesn't believe in magic, Disney eschewed the magical ring for a more scientific approach and created the 2006 cinematic landmine, The Shaggy Dog. This version was directed by Brian Robbins, who also directed Meet Dave, Norbit, and produced Fred the Movie? Is it too late to back out now? Hey, you brought this on yourself. Maybe the first thing we should bring up is the horrifying DVD cover and poster. Look at these eyes. Yeah, just show this to your kids. It'll be fun. Sure, they might have nightmares, but at least it'll shut them up for a few hours. Movie starts off in China, for some reason where a group of military personnel are being assigned to bring back, that's right, a dog. Your military tax dollars at work. Gee, this doesn't look at all familiar. So where is this immortal dog? Why, he's praying with a bunch of monks. How did he get there? Why did he live so long? How is it possible for him to hold his paws together like that, even though the canine forelimb is completely incapable of holding that angle safely? We don't need explanations. It's time to play catch. So the kid throws the ball, which manages to travel 500 yards and even curve around corners. Fuck the dog. The military should be sending whatever psychic powers that monk kid has. Unfortunately, our hero runs into the dog catchers from hell. And then we transition to... A dog peeing on a bush. Way to keep it classy, Disney. Here's our main character of the movie, Dave Douglas. I guess because Douglas sounds like dogless. Gee, I've never heard that pun made before. His home life is in upheaval because he's responsible for handling the court case holding his daughter's teacher on trial for setting fire at a pharmaceutical lab. Hey, take the t-shirt off. Why, did you drop the charges? You know, this might be hard for you to understand, sweetie, but your social studies teacher, the torch, is a criminal. What's hard to believe is that my father's defending a puppy murderer. Who are you gonna put in jail next, Grandma? You know the way she cooks, I should put her in jail. Uh, this is the worst episode of Home Improvement ever. Douglas has the oh-so-brilliant idea of insulting every single demographic on the jury, including old people, fat people, and even bald people, which he hopes will sway them to his side. I think he forgot Asian eye syndrome, excessive blackness, and bad acting. We discover that his client, Kozak, the head scientist at the lab, is played by none other than Iron Man himself, Robert Downey Jr. Wait, 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 wait. Robert Downey Jr. is working at a drug company. That's like Gary Glitter running a daycare. Sad 
Actually, he's probably the only enjoyable part about this movie, because, come on, who can say no to those eyes? We later meet his boss, Mr. Strickland, who, together with Kozak, are trying to learn the secret of the dog's immortality. Well, typically, dogs age seven years for every human year. But in the case of this one, this one that we borrowed from Tibet, a genetic mutation reversed the equation. What I'm saying is, he lives seven years for every human year. So this dog is over 300 years old. Essentially, that dog has lived since the 1700s. But the earliest known record of a sheepdog was in a painting from 1771. So, unless they were earlier in that century, or they had the estimates wrong, then... Isaac, you're looking for logic in a movie where Tim Allen is a lawyer and married to Rebecca from Sex and the City. I think that ship sailed a long time ago. Regardless, they want to transmit the gene into humans so they can live longer lives. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to get all the kinks out, resulting in stuff like this. Therefore, we've had to viralize his entire genetic code in corpus. Which makes his bodily fluids... Pretty dangerous stuff. Does that snake have a furry tail? Uh, that would be a, a, a side effect that I would classify as, a uh, minor. Are you tired of silly things like death? Try Canis Immortalis. Side effects may include restlessness, irritability, and uncontrollable leg opening. Meanwhile, outside, Dave is visiting the lab and dealing with protesters, one of which happens to be his own daughter. No, 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 not okay. You gotta get out of here right now. You're leaving right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, but as a member of the Animal Rescue Group, there are certain principles... You're a member of the 11th grade. And if you don't get out of here right now, I'm gonna ground you. Oh yeah? Who's gonna enforce it? You? You're never home. This is that thing. What's it called? Character development? In this movie? Nah. It's just an excuse to get Carly to sneak into the lab and search for evidence to clear her teacher. Oh please! They were just hit by an arsonist! Surely there's going to be security everywhere. Worst security ever. Well, it's not like that's going to do them any good. Do you have any idea how big these research labs are? Surely the answer's not going to just fly right into their arms. <laughs> Surely a naked Draenei chick isn't just going to fly right into my arms. This never happened. The kids think about using the dog as proof the lab is testing animals, but since there's no tags or markings to indicate this, they decide to take the dog home. Let me guess, we're going to get one of those scenes where they have to keep hiding the dog from the father, pushing him into closets, and hiding toys? Nope, he's just sitting right there at the table. But I thought they knew he doesn't like dogs. Yep. Wow, his kids suck. No matter what happens, that animal's going back to wherever he came from. Look at that. He's paper trained. All right, um, come here. Ow! Oh! Ah! Oh no, he's been infected with the D-Virus! Yes, apparently dog DNA is tiny green dogs that live in your bloodstream. So surely the kid's sweet talk will let them keep the dog despite the fact it just bit him, right? Nope! Off to the pound like all dogs do when they bite people. Oh please, you're just an animal. I'm the one in charge. Uh, a little help? Uh, <laughs> next scene? Well, if he doesn't have rabies, can we take him back? Rabies tests are done by cutting the animal's head off and doing a direct fluorescent antibody test on the brain tissue. Sure, you can have him back after that. And look at Dave's face, he knows this, he just doesn't want to say it. That night, he and his wife have a conversation that basically boils down to, You're being an asshole. You're right, I'm sorry. But enough humanity, we need to set the stage for embarrassing slapstick. <clears throat> Uh-oh, are these symptoms of the D-Virus taking effect? Absolutely. Symptoms include sleeping at the foot of the bed, dreaming about cars, although with Tim Allen I don't think that's much of a difference, and chasing his belt like a tail. This results in a montage of hilarious scenes where we get to see Tim Allen making a fool of himself and acting like a dog. Ah! Uh, fire! 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 
What does this have to do with the non-enzymatic browning of pastries? See, because a Maillard reaction is- I forget it. Douglas. At this rate, I'm afraid to imagine what would happen if the rest of the human race ended up like this. Yes, this is what Kozak wanted to inflict on everybody. A master race of human-dog hybrids that live hundreds of years and can apparently be tested for rabies without being killed. No, seriously, that's a plot point that apparently rabies tests are about as intrusive as having your teeth clean. Way to teach kids something useful, Disney. You and your buddy. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you watched some of this? Is that what you watched? Why did you bite me? You bit me on purpose. You knew who I was, didn't you? You bit me because you knew it was me. What's happening? What's happening to me? Ooh, the next phase of the D-Virus infection. Total dog transformation. Which happens so suddenly that not only does the audience not see it happen, but even Dave himself doesn't notice it. Well, that's one way to save on your budget. After all, you already spent so much on those okay. CG green dog particles that I still don't understand what they're supposed to be. Hey there. How'd you get out? Well, you let me in here. Come here. Hey! Yes, even after escaping the pound, running down the street, naked I might add, and even seeing himself on camera, he doesn't even realize he's a dog yet. Is your father a stupid man? Yeah, wake myself up. No! Oh, that hurt. So I'm not dreaming. I'm not in a dog costume. Which can only mean one thing. I'm a dog. Weird things have happened. I am a dog! dog. Perfectly dog. understandable, everybody! I'm a dog! I am a dog! I am acting! But really, it's now you figure this out? I transform all the time. If the two-foot stance and fur doesn't give it away, surely the fact that you don't have any hands should be a clue. So he tries to tell the kids that it's him, even resorting to using Scrabble pieces, but none of that seems to get their attention. Actually, I think he's just trying to ask for some I am's dog food. But this does give us one decent line out of him. 16 years not once have you tried to clean up your room. But boy, when dad turns into a dog, you're right there cleaning everything up. Really, what follows is mostly filler. The only thing of importance is when his son Josh shows interest in the school drama club, which Dave didn't even know about. As a result, Josh intends to tank his entire math score, getting him banned from football just to avoid talking to his dad. You know, it's ironic that the dad turned into a dog, seeing as the son is a complete pussy. Meanwhile, Kozak's two goons manage to track down Shaggy at the pound and return him to the lab, and Dave is forced to sleep in the garage, where he finally turns back into a human. Oh, thank you, conveniently placed towel, preventing me from having to see Tim Allen's man tool. Upstairs, he attempts to explain what happened, which goes exactly as well as you'd expect. Clearly you're upset, and I would be upset too. But there's, there's a simple but hard to swallow explanation for all this. I turned into a dog. <laughs> when you're that far in the hole, Alan, it doesn't matter what you say. I got drunk and woke up in a ditch. I had to save a child from a burning building. I supercharged my riding mower again. So at work, he tries to explain to Danny Glover here that what happened yesterday was just some sort of food poisoning. But of course, the doggy torment continues. Can't they work in the DA's office? Jeez. A family picture. <sighs> no, bad CGI. Bad, get back in the corner and think about what you've done. The only good scene we get out of this is when Dave is trying to work prosecution against the witness, even though he's one of the only people in the courtroom who believes he's telling the truth, and needs to know more about what Grant and Strickland are doing. How did this monkey act like a dog? It was growling and chasing its tail. <laughs> was there anything else that was genetically odd? There was a snake with a tail like a dog. <laughs> 
than rats. Rats that barked. <laughs> It's true! <laughs> Dave tries to attend a parent-teacher meeting without giving in to the dog side, but the cat in the tree outside just seems to scream, Come get me! Resulting in- Wait, let me guess. Musical chase sequence. But what song? You're not. Who let the dogs out? Son of a Who let the dogs out? And this chase sequence is so completely stupid. The human body is simply not built to run on all fours. It didn't work for Sabretooth in X-Men Origins, and it doesn't work here. I especially love this scene where he jumps through the hedge and it literally explodes behind him. I'm getting man's best friend flashbacks here. I swear, if he ends up swallowing that cat whole, I'm leaving. Soon the cat is cornered. Oh. What, is he going to turn into a cat now? How did he turn into a dog before his reflection changed? Is he changing faster than the speed of light? I just want to know how he managed to change out of his clothes when they're four feet behind him. Well, he gets caught again, but not too long after, the family comes to pick him up. Kids, boy am I glad to see you. This mastiff just sold me for three biscuits. Ah, Disney, the best in family entertainment and prison sodomy jokes. But at least Dave can watch his son play football now. You're in the tailback. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Coach. You don't have to play me. What? Everybody plays, Douglas. Come on. But with the game on the line and all. We're up by 30. Now let's go. Ha! Here it comes. You got the ball. Run! Run! Oh, poor Spencer Breslin. So much, well, I want to say promise, but I don't think that word applies here. Cat in the hat, the Santa Claus, and now this? Surely there's something bright in his future. Oh well. You completely suck, Douglas. Why do you even show up? Jeez, now I'm getting Little League flashbacks. Back home, everything seems to be going alright. But we can't have a happy family in a Disney movie. We need to have some sort of drama. Now, if I were writing a story about a family that does nothing but further cliche stereotypes, what would I do next? I know! The stupid husband forgot their anniversary! Exactly! So he rushes off to meet her at the restaurant and... Hey, where'd he get the flowers? No joke, we didn't edit anything out. He just shows up and has flowers. Needless to say, she does not take it well. Is that how it ends? With him, God knows where, and me hugging the dog. No, I'm going to figure out what happened to me, and I'm going to fix it. And I'm going to be a better man. I promise. Oh. I love you. I love you, wife. I know we're joking with that clip, but really, Tim Allen is absolutely sleepwalking through this movie. He just doesn't care. Kristen Davis here isn't giving her all either, but at least she's giving a four. If it seems like we're leaving a lot out of the movie, let's allow the dog to sum up everything we've learned so far. I'm not a bad dog, but I'm a terrible man. That's really all you need to know. With a newfound drive, Dave sets out to make things right. Dog gun it. He goes to Kenny to see about getting a warrant to search the lab, thinking Kozak is hiding something. However, it turns out Mr. Forrester confessed and that Dave was taken off the case. At the lab, he decides to sneak in, but realizes he needs to be a dog to fit. He needs to. Change! You got change! Come on, help a guy out! Alright, throw the stick. Over there. Wow. I can't believe that worked! So he goes through the air vents and sees Kozak about to inject Strickland with the serum. However... He's going into shock! It's the serum! What it doesn't do? work! Of course it works. I just didn't give it to him. What have you done to him? Lance? Lance, I'm so sorry that I had to do this to you, but I just couldn't let you take all the credit again. And plus, you're a pig, and I hate you. I hate you, and so... Oh, don't you worry. Obadiah will get his revenge for you later. You remember this one, right? It's a shame the government didn't approve him. There's so many applications for causing short-term paralysis. Can you hold this for a second? Get rid of it, accomplice. Ah. You do realize you're both wearing gloves, right? After Dave escapes, Kozak finds out about the transformation and wants his two scientists to find it. 
Dave returns home and in the most over-the-top triumphant leap ever, does what he should have done two days ago. Cool. Finally. Strickland? Yes. It's okay, kiddo. It's okay. I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. Can you please forgive me? There's nothing to forgive. Now we just gotta convince Mom. She won't think we're crazy, right? I mean, our parents really believe what we say all the time. It looks like everything's going to work out. Dave comes to terms with his son's thespian romance, and they're about to explain everything to Mom when... That Somebody's peeing on the lawn! He rushes out and he gets shot by the most powerful animal control taser in the freaking world! Wow, look at this thing! It warps the fabric of space time like it's the goddamn Matrix! Where would you even get something like that? Well, you'd have to build it yourself! Here we are with our standard issue Binford Animal Control Taser, which is okay for common dogs and smaller beasts. Test, why don't you bend over and let me give the audience a demonstration? I don't think so, Isaac. But what are you going to do when something like this comes your way? Well, the Binford Animal Control Taser wasn't designed for animals that big. It wasn't until I souped it up with... What, audience? More power! You're darn right. More power. Now, the only beast large enough to withstand a hit from one of these is Test's mother. Now, open the cage! That is very impressive, Isaac. We'll be right back after these messages from Binford. Now... Kozak tells Dave he's going to dissect him in order to figure out how he got turned into a dog. But Dave ends up biting his finger, thus spreading the D-virus to him. So now Dave needs to figure out a way to get out of dog form so he can free himself. Thankfully, Shaggy is there to tell him to meditate as that will calm him down and turn him back. Slow rolling waves of gravy crashing under the shark. A beached whale made of peanut butter. Ah, scary eyes! Quick, cut to the monkey so we don't have to pay animators to do a transformation sequence! So Dave becomes the lab animal whisperer and coordinates the animals into making their escape, but before he can escape himself, he gets captured again by the two assistant scientists. And Alan just has one question for Larry here. Are you or are you not a Tool Time fan? <laughs> I've never seen the show in my life. Thankfully, the chimp returns not two minutes later to save him with the super, super fucking animal, animal taser. taser. The kids arrive to save their dad, but uh-oh, they took the wrong dog. And they are naturally having a difficult time convincing their mother. Especially when Dave calls her from the car. She has who? Poe, that's his real name. You know, how did the kids find him? That's weird. That is not the only thing that's weird. No, not that. You ought to see what I'm looking at. They're trying to tell me that... Uh, I'll meet you at the courthouse and I'll explain everything to you. I think you better explain it now. Well, I can't explain... I can't... Hold on a second. I can't. The, the chimp... What? Excuse me. The monkey... Hello. What is it? The chimp... Chimp? The chimp has got sunglasses on. He's supposed to be giving me directions. I would know from experience that monkeys are not the most reliable of creatures. That's my Nora Jones CD. You can play it if you want. Play it. But there are exceptions to every rule. He did not just say that. I think he did. Okay then. Ah, 
So Dave makes it to the court and convinces his wife it's him and is ready to expose Kozak for what he is after a change of clothes. Mr. Douglas? Yeah. <laughs> After begging to be back on the case, see, begging because he's a dog, they call Kozak to the stand and attempt to get his heart rate up to induce a transformation. Get ready for embarrassing slapstick in three, two, one. Kozak! 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 Go fetch! So they arrest Kozak for being a dog, and Glover tells Dave he's a shoe in for district attorney. The Shaggy DA? They're setting up for a sequel, aren't they? Maybe. Notice the animal hybrids are still around, and the two associate scientists are never arrested or brought to justice. As far as we know, they just woke up in the lab after the taser wore off. And they never cured Dave's infection either, so is he going to live forever too? In any case, how do we end such a ridiculous movie like this? Surfing dog. Hey, as long as it's not Karate Dog, I'm glad it's over. Boy, you weren't kidding about this movie. It really is embarrassing to watch. You know these are fairly decent actors, but they are just not having any fun in this. It's obvious they're being forced into a movie they were contractually obligated to make. I agree. Although, if anything, Robert Downey Jr. was still the most memorable character in all of this. But that doesn't make up for the effects that range from confusing to pointless to horrifying. Furthering overused cliché stereotypes and just being an overall unfunny and occasionally mean-spirited movie. If anything, I think it would frighten your kids more than entertain them. Not to argue that the original was a masterpiece or anything, but there was a sense that it was at least trying to be a fun movie. This one? I have no idea what they were thinking. So then, what should we do with this piece of dog crap? Hmm, you still have that gun I gave you? Yes. Paul! This was a great idea. Send me another! Paul! Yeah! is not the same I must have been infected when it bit me on my hand and now I understand why I'm feeling like a big dog I want to thank you for picking up my car at the animal shelter I figured you were getting it fixed <laughs>